Prescott of Black Coalition Fighting Back Against Serial Murderers to um, talk about the organizing that went on and uh, to get the Los Angeles Police Department to take seriously over 200 missing and murdered women. So come on up, Margaret. Thank you, thank you so much for uh, inviting me here and also I was surprised to see you play some of the clips from the documentary film, Tales of the Grim Sleeper. And uh, it's still available, I think, on HBO to go that tells some of the story of, of what we did. I, I have to say, just putting in context the work that we have done and that we are continuing to do. Um, I, I have to say that within the sex industry itself, and Rachel, West, who's here with U.S. Prostitutes Collective. Um, U.S. Prostitutes Collective grew out of a group of black sex workers in New York City that were called New York Prostitutes Collective, and better known as NYP, which was also New York Police. So that was quite something. And uh, going back, probably a number of you probably were not born yet when NYP began about 1978 in New York. So you can imagine, I mean, it's been years and years and years of sex workers uh, campaigning and pushing for decriminalization. And also for black sex workers, even within the sex worker industry itself, there was racism within the industry. There's a reason why, historically, a lot of the women, if not the majority, who work on the streets were black women because we found that a lot of the black women couldn't get the better jobs, the inside jobs, you know, having to look a certain way if you're black um, and a woman and you're in a certain hotel or a certain neighborhood that you were just assumed to be a sex worker anyway. So um, enough said on that. But I think that um, really has an impact also on the level of violence, which a number of people spoke about and will speak about that sex workers on the street in particular face, and all sex workers face. And uh, we also know that years ago when we were doing some campaigning, I don't remember Rachel up here, and I think the Sacramento Bee ran a story where they were talking about hunting down hookers. And even that particular phrase, hunting down hookers, you know, tells you quite a lot. Now, with the serial murders of black women in South Los Angeles that began in the 1980s, again, the context for it, I was back east, I think I was in New York at the time, I had the Hillside Strangler. Um, some of you may have heard about the Hillside Strangler also killing sex workers mainly in the Los Angeles area. I know about it in New York. I heard about it in New York. The first, his first victim was actually a black woman but he went on to kill white sex workers. Now, we know a lot of white sex workers get killed and not attention given to it, but when we look at what happened in South Los Angeles and repeat it in Cleveland and in cities across the country, that when a black woman, an impoverished black woman, gets killed, period, you know, it's like, that's not a news story, that's not relevant, much less a black sex worker. So in the film, you heard me that I took the mic from the chief of the police, um, and I talked about the, the white woman who was killed in Aruba. The whole damn world knew about it, and they should, because when we're killed, everybody should know about it. But when I sat in my living room and heard LAPD announce that 11 black women were victims of a serial killer in a 40 mile radius in South Los Angeles, and that was the first announcement. We all knew very well that that happened because these were impoverished black women. So it was really a coming together of, um, of the illegality, because not all of them, but some of them, majority of them likely were sex workers, also race, that they were black, and they were poor. These were impoverished women who worked on the street. So it was like a, a perfect storm. And when we went to 
down. I gathered some folks and went down to have them have the training uh, that we had done before with um, uh, New York NYP and, and New, uh, U.S. Prostitutes Collective began, and we, of course, uh, consulted right away. We went down to the police headquarters, and we were asked, it's reflected in the film, but why are you concerned about these women? He's only killing hookers. So we knew right away that our work was cut out for us. Now this is what, 2019? The Black Coalition was founded in the mid-1980s, okay? And in that period of time, there were five serial killers operating at the same time in a 40 mile radius of an impoverished black community that also was feeling the aftermath of a crack epidemic crap that was flown in on military planes as part of the whole Iran Contra illegal, funding the illegal war in, in Central America. And some of those people, some of the women were caught up in that. So uh, talk about a perfect storm. So we began, uh, for, we didn't know that there were five. How is that possible in a 40 mile radius that you can have as many as 200 Black women, either dead or missing, and this whole damn country doesn't know about it. Most people in Los Angeles don't know about it. And when we go to the mainstream civil rights organizations, the churches, the feminist movement, who the hell wants to know? These are a bunch of po-ass, crackhead hoes, okay? And what we said, this is some mother's child, this is some father's daughter, the majority of them are mothers. Um, Princess wasn't a mother. I hope you all take one of these. Princess was 15 years old. She was a, a, in foster care, abused and ran away and was killed. But the vast majority of these were beautiful women with their lives ahead of them. So their children uh, who were left behind. Now, the most, um, the, if you want to call it famous or infamous of the cases you likely heard, or some of you may have heard of the case of the grim sleeper, Lonnie Franklin. Um, and he, the photos on the flyer here are only some of Lonnie's victims, okay? Um, the, there is the thought that Lonnie Franklin likely was responsible for about 50 or so of those murders. Recently, you also heard of the guy who um, confessed to killing 200 women across the country. That was really frightening on so many levels. But part, some of those women were in South Los Angeles. And we had to fight a lot with LAPD because we knew that they were not prioritizing the women. They didn't really give a damn. And in a lot of ways, they felt, hey, He's helping to clean up the streets, okay? So there's no time to go into it. We don't have the time now. But the chief of police at LAPD, they were pretty pissed off with me. And a dead bird was hung outside my bedroom window. Somebody who looked like the composite of the serial killer was parked outside my house. I was a single mother with a, a young daughter uh, at the time. And when I looked at the photo of this man that's now done all of these drawings for these 200 people, I realized that was the guy who was outside my house. That was the first composite that we were circulating. We gave out probably about 100,000 flyers across South Los Angeles. We even went into Rodeo Drive in Beverly Hills at some point giving stuff out. We did everything we could to draw, bring attention to these murders, to campaign and fight for justice, right? Um, and, uh, you know, to, to get a um, reward established. So a lot has happened. And it was really, I, I had no idea that when, after my daughter's grown, and at this age, I still would be dealing with this issue. And recently, we had a discussion with some of the task force members in LAPD because we're working on a permanent 
memorial for the victims. And people say, well, why do you want a permanent memorial? And I mean a beautiful life-size bronze, okay? They may be gone, but they're never gonna be forgotten. Because if the lives of these women, of these poor black sex workers, crackheads, whoever, however you want to call them, don't count, neither do the lives of any of us. All right. And we also know that these maniacs, when they start going after uh, black trans women, sex workers, eventually they're going to go and start killing anybody. So we understand the relationship with them. So we are planning to have a permanent memorial, a life-size bronze. We have done a call to artists. Um, and we have an incredible group of artists that have submitted. We're now in the process of selecting uh, the artists who will be commissioned to do this. The location is in Martin Luther King Park in South Los Angeles. And we need to raise a lot of money for this. But none of us, we've all been volunteers. We've never become an NGO or gotten grants or whatever. We've just done this work on a grassroots level, but we are determined that this is gonna happen. If I do nothing else while I'm on this earth walk, that permanent memorial to women who are usually looked down upon, abused, look as nothing, are gonna be there to reflect the love and care of the community and say this must never happen again, and this kind of criminalization that puts women in a position or any sex worker in a position of being killed, murdered, raped, has got to stop because we understand the interrelationship between both of those. But it's not only the, uh, and by the way, our website is Rose South LA. Why that name? Rose stands for reclaiming our sisters everywhere, South LA. And we chose that name because we know there are pockets of black women who are being murdered, Washington, D.C., Cleveland, Ohio, across this nation, Chicago, and we're hoping that they will start mobilizing as a community, and perhaps there could be a Rose Chicago, or a Rose New York, or whatever, reclaiming our sisters everywhere, okay? So you can go to the website, we have a map, of um, where some of the, the victims, a lot of these victims were found. We have some historic documents going back to the mid-1980s. But we have not forgotten about accountability, you see. It's not like we're just working on this victim's memorial project and that's the end of it. No, 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 no. Compensation. What you all did in winning the compensation laws um, the change that you did here in California that you all were involved in is important because the time that these women were killed, their families got very, very little in terms of compensation. Because if you're a sex worker, right, you, and you, uh, you're a victim of violence, you know, you're not eligible for it. So we are making a political case that compensation has got to be retroactive for those families and for the children who are left behind. And I'm glad to see that ACLU in, in Los Angeles is doing something because they haven't done anything on this. And now that I'm meeting you tonight and you're connected with them, we want to make sure that they get on board and they support the work that we are doing, okay? So the compensation piece is one piece. But we haven't forgotten about the police. Don't tell me that you got 200, and I'll tell you a shocking number, I'll end with this. They are now telling us that in the period of time that we have been campaigning, there were five to 800 bodies of women in Los Angeles, not only South LA, but the same quote unquote type of woman in alleyways, in parks, dismissed, reported as a Jane Doe, black Jane Doe found in Jesse Owens Park or whatever. Five to 800. This is a mini genocide and it is an outrage that this state isn't in an uproar about it, the city of Los Angeles isn't in an uproar about it, or the whole of the United States isn't in an uproar about it because this is a continuation of the devaluation of the lives of some of us that began when they brought those slave ships over from the continent. Now we're not gonna have it. 
So we have to work on a lot of different levels, and that's one of the reasons I came up here to be with you all tonight, to share this story. But to let you all know that we need each other. We need to stand with each other because that's how we're going to really win decriminalization and we're going to stop the violence and we're going to stop the poverty that forces so many of those women who were killed, who were on the street. So thank you so much for being, for inviting me. And I hope you will go and check out the Rose LA website. Also, the Black Coalition of Fighting Back Serial Murders does have a website. And I will have to say that US Prostitutes Collective, the uh, English Collective of Prostitutes, they were with us. I have a document from 1987, I think, or 88, of support um, for the work that we were doing. And there weren't a whole lot of people who were standing with us then. So thank you, um, Rachel, and, and all of you for doing the good work that you're doing.